Hi, everybody. Co here with my co-host, Gary Kuhn. And I am here to tell you real quick about the build that I've been using to, for, uh, to level up here in Diablo 4. So this is not like an official guide of, by any means. Um, it's not like all the way out to 100. It's not all the Paragon boards. But it's basically, if you watch my stream or you've watched my playthrough, it's kind of what I'm doing, my idea behind it, and how it's been going. So without further ado, let's talk about it a little bit. I am playing a rogue. I am playing a rogue with a relative focus on energy regen and also twisted blades. Um, so let's go talk about the build real quick. The first thing I have is puncture and puncture is an ability that is a marksman ability, which is important for something we're going to do later. Uh, the things that I'm using for the sides are obviously enhanced and then primary puncture. So it ricochets a little bit um, just so it kind of bounces around and hits all the enemies. Uh, we have some stuff that, you know, works with slow and days, which our dash applies. So this can be kind of helpful. But another thing to mention with this build, you can play with a lot of these things unless I specifically say a reason for doing it. So you could also use fundamental that would probably be fine um, because then you'll be applying vulnerable, which is also great. But we, all, we apply vulnerability with some other stuff. So again, it's kind of whatever your flavor picks. Anyway, our main attack is puncture. Gives us a little bit of range. Uh, the point of this build is to get our twisted blades, which is our next skill. Uh, we max this, of course. Our point is to get twisted blades as planted as much as we can into a target. And then if there's multiple targets around, kind of position ourselves between us and the blades. So when they return to us, they do a bunch of damage. Bonus if Shadow Imbue is on, which we'll also go over in a second, and it kind of, kind of goes from there. The Twisted Blades, we use Advanced Twisting Blades, which helps with the cooldown a little bit. Of course, if you'd like to, you can also get improved Twisted Blades um, with the Dazed. But that's kind of a single target thing, and this is a, a build that's meant for a lot of targets generally, so I, I kind of went with this one here. Um, moving on down, we go to our Bread and Butter Movement skill, which is Dash. I do like Dash over uh, Shadow Step myself, because it doesn't require a target. And that gives it a lot of versatility as well. Um, going down dash, we have enhanced dash and then discipline dash to add the um, slow. And then we can also get some days in there possibly as well. Very beneficial. Then we go down to our spam abilities. Now, these are abilities that I basically just kind of spam the entire time. I want them on me as much as possible. The first one is this guy here, Dark Shroud. This is going to give us a little bit of damage and a little bit of defense because we did take the countering Dark Shroud ability, which gives us a little bit of crit strike. Um, the thing is, is that I, what I used to use, especially, which is great for the main story when you're running around so much, is subverting, because that gives you a little bit of movement speed on top of that. This is total preference thing. We're basically picking movement speed or damage. Um, I'm now doing damage because I'm finding myself kind of planting myself in front of, of bosses and trying to do as much as possible in a short amount of time. So every bit helps, but that's kind of where we are from there. This is also where we start taking some passives. So here I have three points into Agile. Using a cooldown increases your dodge chance by 12% for three seconds for a little bit of survivability. I also went ahead and dropped a point into exploit um, just to get, again, a little bit of extra damage in there. These passives I'm still playing around with in my build. I have by no means solidified my choices in passives. I'm just kind of using what works and what has been working. So this kind of stuff may change, you know, whenever I, I feel like it. Going down to here, my my uh, imbuement is shadow. I love shadow imbuement because when you see me burst through a bunch of enemies and all of a sudden they all just pop, that's generally this working. Um, I do prefer upfront damage over poison, uh, which is a very popular option because frankly, I like it when things pop and, and die. That's it. It's just preference. I really like shadow imbuement for that. On top of that, I have sunk all my uh, three passes into these two abilities. The first one adds a little bit of a chance to Good stun show. on lucky hits. And the second one gives us energy back whenever shadow damage uh, kills an enemy. So this kind of helps when you're running around through dungeons and stuff to keep your energy level relatively high, which is great. I also have three points here in precision imbuement just to get a little bit of critties in there. I do love my critties. Going down to the next section, um, this is where I have a lot of my passives. Uh, I have adrenaline rush because I'm moving around all the time. So that gives us more energy regen. Uh, I also have haste at three ranks. When we're above 50% energy, we get more movement speed. When we're below, we get more attack speed. It's a win-win. Um, a lot, if I'm if I'm moving between enemies, my energy is, is going up so I can get to where I want to go faster. If I'm actually engaged in combat, I'm doing more damage. Love it. I wish every perk was like that. Going over to Impetus, uh, after moving 15 meters, your next attack deals 21% increased damage. I almost never stop moving unless my inner sight is going off. And that means that this is kind of constantly working, which is nice. Uh, I might put these points somewhere else later, but they're working fine for now. Moving down to our ultimate, I do use Shadow Clone. I use Shadow Clone because, well, not only do I really like it because it's a great bit of extra burst, 
but I also uh, really like the fact that it, it grants unstoppable if we need it as well. So it can kind of be like a little bit of an O-ish button if you need it. Good show. Nice Moving down to our key passive, I have picked close quarters. Now that we're down here, I can tell you why Good I picked show. the marksman skill all the way up top. So mark a puncture is a marksman skill. Our main core skill is a cutthroat skill uh, or a melee skill. So what close quarters does is because I'm constantly alternating between the two, um, I'm constantly getting a 10% attack speed bonus for eight seconds. And then when they're both active, we do more damage against crowd controlled enemies, which our dash does as well. So we get all sorts of bonuses there. Now on top of that, we also have some fun stuff in here, um, damaging a vulnerable enemy with marksman or cut cutthroat skill, 20% chance to summon more shadow clones. So that's good. Um, up here, while you have both bonuses from close quarters combat key passes, your dodge chance increases whenever you're hit by a close enemy um, until you then dodge an attack and it resets. So that's kind of awesome. So um, going over this, we have direct dealing uh, damage to daze enemies, daze enemies with an agility skill, grant stealth. That one I, I, I kind of use, again, this is all just kind of mostly leveling up stuff. This I don't even use right now, so I need to replace these boots. Um, Twisted Blades, this is huge for this build. Uh, getting, getting um, it's called Blade Dancer. This will make it so your Twisted Blades orbits around you and does more damage. This is huge for getting more DPS out there, which is great. Uh, moving over here, we have some imbuement stuff on this guy. Oh wait, no, this is a 19% critical chance uh, against injured enemies. While you're healthy, you get more uh, crowd control duration. Uh, this one skills deal up to 15% increased damage based on available primary resource. This is awesome because it synergizes really well with Inner Sight, which maximizes up, boop, which maximizes your energy for a four second period of time. So this makes it so whenever you're doing Inner Sight, you're also doing a ton more damage. So if you save a lot of times your Shadow Clone for uh, Inner Sight, and then you have this working as well, it's just kind of ridiculous and, and fantastic. So. Uh, then we also have damaging an elite enemy with a basic skill generates seven energy. Again, amazing for inner sight when you're bouncing between, or it's not, not inner sight, amazing when you don't have inner sight up as a way to keep your, your blades going. Uh, we also up here have attacking enemies with a basic skill, increase the damage of your next core skill, which is, of course, our twisted blades. And then finally up here is a little bit of a, a lucky hit thing as well. So that is, in the fastest possible way, what I am doing in my build. Is this the best build? Absolutely not. Uh, this is basically just what I've been doing leveling up. And I get asked all the time, what is my build? Well, this is what it is. It's not even fine tuned. I have barely looked into any of the Paragon boards. I have not done that much testing, but I have messed around with abilities all the time. This build has changed numerous times and I'm sure it will continue changing as I figure out better ways to do things. So that is where we are. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that it most importantly gives you some ideas for your build. You probably don't want to use this build exactly because I'm sure you can probably come up with something better, but maybe this gave you some ideas for something you can do with your own fun builds. That's all. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you at the channel, twitch.tv slash co or twitch.tv slash co. As always, appreciate your time. See you next time. Bye-bye.